is Salt Lake City. How are you doing? All right, well, thank you very much. I hope you appreciate this uh, Twitter feed. Uh, my whole presentation is not a presentation per se. It's a conversation with you that happens to have some visuals in the background. So keep that in mind. This is a conversation that we're having. And everything that I'm going to be sharing with you is demonstrating the power of social media and digital media to enhance your voice, to enhance your community's voice, to empower, to solicit public imp opinion, as well as to engage with your community members, OK? So with that in mind, we are going to start. I'm going to turn off this. This is Visible Tweets, by the way, Visible Tweets. Dot com and almost everything I'm going to share with you is free, which I love because it's all about maximizing tax dollars, your client dollars as well, to do much, much good. All right, so we're going to go right into this presentation, which isn't really a presentation, but um, I want to really talk about you know putting the public back in. Okay, here we go. Okay, so. <laughs> Who am I? Um, thanks for the kind introduction. I'm Ted Nguyen. And for those people that don't know, Nguyen is the most popular last name in Vietnam. And it also happens to be um, the most popular last name in Southern California. That's San Diego, LA, Orange County, and Ventura County. So that name beats out all other names. I mean, Smith is on the bottom, Garcia is the bottom, Gonzalez bottom, Lee bottom. So it's Nguyen, so it's a win-win situation for me. I'm so proud to be here. <laughs> you guys got it, yay. Um, and I don't even have to do Gingham style. Um, you know what, N no joke. Um, when the system went down last, uh, you know, yesterday during lunchtime, I thought, oh, I hope that doesn't happen to me. Because I have like a gazillion internet and, you know, interactive features, et cetera. So I'm like, oh, please don't let that happen. Um, so if I said, if it does happen, I'm going to teach the crowd Gingham style. <laughs> and I actually did that to another crowd. But why is this me? It's Ted Nguyen, USA, and has the theme of life short to live big. Because that's my philosophy. Life is so short. If you really think about the whole totality of our lifetime, it's really not that long, right? We are only put on this planet for a short amount of time. And so it's really incumbent upon us to do so much great things with that limited time. I think that's why you guys are all here as public participation participants or public participation pra practitioners, professionals. It's kind of hard to say, so I'm going to say P3, OK? So as P3ers, you know exactly what it's like to be in the trenches, to do all these things, to try to maximize the time and resources. And so that's why I'm so humbled to be here to share with you some of the tricks, tips, and strategies that I've learned along the way in social media and digital communications. So why USA? USA, because I love this country. I'm an um, a immigrant from Vietnam. We left in 1975 at the end of the Vietnam War, or the American War, as the Vietnamese call it, where <laughs> it's true. <laughs> why would we, they call it the Vietnam War, right? Um, but as the Vietnam slash American War, and I am so proud to be here, and it's because of the service people that made it possible for us to be here. I'm talking about the 55,000 Americans that died so that my family, as well as a million other Vietnamese, can come to this country. I'm so blessed to be here. And so I took it upon myself to use USA because I'm very proud of the fact that I'm an American. And why this look and feel? Because it's Americana because all of us represents that Americana. If you're from America, sorry Canadians, but you're North Americans. Um, <laughs> a, right? Okay, I know, you understand me after I said the A, right? Okay, thank you. So that's why it's Ted Nguyen USA. Life short, so live big. So I really mean that. And a lot of these information I have on my website, so feel free to go on the website at Ted Nguyen. USA.com. And on Twitter, I'm just at Ted Nguyen, T-E-D-N-G-U-I-N. So I'm really happy to be talking about putting the public back into public participation, because that's what it's all about, is to engage the public into everything that we're doing. But as you've heard from other keynotes, as well as the panel discussions, the public is far too busy doing cooking, working, going to school, 
having their daily lives to be so occupied by this project that's important to us, but it's not really important to them. So we need to capture their imagination, their interest in a very limited time. So I'm kind of, I'm going to show you some techniques of actually how to go about doing that. So we're using the hashtag IAP2NA2013. It's a little bit long, but it works. So that's what we're using. And as you can see, or you actually can't see that, but I'm gonna zoom out so you can actually see. So I really wanted to give a shout out to a photograph, this beautiful photo. And where was it from? Instagram. So Joe, raise your hand. You're the one who took that photo. Yeah. Isn't that great? It's a beautiful shot. That's what I'm talking about. Everyday people doing everyday things. So you just happen to be walking, you know, before the conference started, right? Taking a tour, walking around, you happen to see this beautiful rainbow. So you capture that magical moment. And not only did you capture it, but you shared it with your followers, right? And then I happened to share it to, with my followers. And then it got, just go, it went on and on and on, right? So globally, people are able to actually hear and see and feel what's happening in this room and see how beautiful it is. And to answer your question, the rainbow is a perfect setting for the gold that we're finding here. Okay, so I wanted to also kind of share with you a couple of different things if it works. I'm just praying that it works and I don't. Okay, so, so, this is an example of a bind, so let's just hear it. The voices and faces of ongoing public participation. So you folks are probably in here, right? Can you see it? Yep, it posted. It was posted yesterday. Six seconds, powerful video images that have been spread throughout the world. And I wanted to find out who is responsible for the IAP to that's been tweeting all this time. Who's been doing that? No, who's been tweeting on the official account? Tim and Polina. You guys have been doing an amazing job. You know, whenever I, I know everything that's going on. And without, you know, without these key people that I want to share with you, uh, just a quick moment, um, this conference wouldn't have happened. And I know that we all are enjoying the conference and it's working seamlessly, but there's been some key individuals that I wanted to give a shout out to. And the first person I want to give a shout out to is the person who's invited me to come and speak. And that's Eileen Barron, who is also a, um, a leader of this organization. So Eileen, can I have you come up here? Thank you so much. The next person is Leah. Where's Leah? Thank you. And without further ado, we have Wendy. Where's Wendy? This is a small token of my appreciation, and I think I can safely say this to the crowd, among all of us here, we're so grateful for all three of you and so many more that have contributed to making this such a delight. Thank so thank much. you. <laughs> How did this happen, right? How did this happen? I called a flower patch, they can deliver, so I talked to the hotel and said, can you do this? You know what they said? We don't have anybody designated to do this, but we'll do it. And guess what I'm gonna do when, I, when I'm done here? I'm gonna tweet about it and I'm gonna write a blog post to my 250,000 followers, because social media is about delighting your guests, your constituents, your citizens. So really think about that as far as your ability to delight them. So why social media? I've talked about it's an ability to be organic, to be natural, to delight people. And you've seen the stats and everything, so I just want you to see for, for yourself why social media is so important.
So Larry says, are you guys ready for the revolution? You know what, it's happening. And it seems like, you know, we're, we all know that it's happening, but I liken it to, you know, the boiling frog theory. You know, you're in that boiling pot, the frog will not jump out of that boiling pot because it's just, uh, actually it's just being heated slowly because we're kind of like feeling the effects and then it starts to boil and then the frog's dead, right? So I share that because I don't want you folks to be those frogs. I want you to be able to adapt and be sensitive to what's happening around you so that you can make sense of it. And as P3 practitioners, you can actually do something to kind of harness the power of social media so that you can actually do some great work with that. We're seeing evidence of the Arab Spring and um, you know, it's been an eye opener for a lot of different people in the world. Who would have imagined that these despots would be toppled by the power of the people to mobilize? And where do they mobilize but on Twitter, Facebook, and other social media networks, right? And see, we saw evidence of that, and the government tried to shut it down, but what happened? People were creative, and they found other sources of information. So during the Egyptian uprising and the crackdown, journalists started using audio boo. And that's the first thing that I utilized um, upon doing social media was audio boo, because I found out about it at South by Southwest, and that's why I'm a big fan of Austin, Texas. The, so journalists started telling that story about what was happening in Egypt with camels running through Tahrir Square via audio. So there is a plethora of different social media tools that you should be aware of so that you don't become those frogs. A big eye-opening moment for me was this image. Who knows who this image is of? In the back, go ahead. It's a young woman whose image was used and held up as a martyr, but she's actually alive, and according to the radio interview I heard on CBC, her life has been destroyed. So that's Nada. Yeah, Nada, with the um, information that at that time, um, you know, was a martyr. You know, there was, it was said that she was a, an Iranian professional, actually an Iranian woman who graduated from university. She just happened to be watching the demonstrations and she was actually shot, or the story said. But no matter of the truthfulness of the story itself, back then, three years ago, I was in the comfort of my home in Orange County, California, and I saw that image of Nada, or supposedly Nada, bleeding and dying and gasping her last breath. And there was an image of an Iranian woman who was gasping her last breath. It happened not to be Nada, but there was a woman that was dying on the streets. And I made it my point there and then to utilize all the social media tools, not for trivial purposes, but for some social good. And I said, as an American, as, a, as everything that I've gone through as a refugee, you know, I cannot sit in the comfort of my home and not try to do something. I know that your hearts and your minds are in the right place, right? That's why you are in this business. So it's incumbent upon us to utilize our strengths, our resources, our talents, our minds, and our hearts to do some social good. And what better social good than to contribute to that conversation to make the world a little bit better of a place. And I may sound idealistic, but I'm pretty optimistic, just like the previous lunchtime speaker. I'm very optimistic about the future if we can harness these tools to our advantage. So it's really about optimizing your environment, right? And what do I mean by that? I think on the one side, from an organizational level, we always say, okay, provide that system, provide those different guidelines, do everything you can to optimize the environment so that you can participate in that conversation. I'd like to turn that around a little bit and say, it's your time to optimize yourself to be part of that conversation. And my mom always says that God gave you, Ted, two ears and one mouth for a reason, right? So listen to the conversation, listen first. Optimize your environment by listening to what's happening around you. 
whatever your interests are, listen to that before engaging, right? It's like a high school guy or gal, remember, that always talked about himself or herself all the time. What happened after a while? You tuned out, right? So if you go into social media to launch about me, my organization, and no matter how important what you folks are doing in your organization, no matter how impactful it is, the general public doesn't care. I mean, it's kind of a strong statement, but it's, it's realistic, isn't it? Because they're so busy with their lives. But when they do care is when you listen to them first. You listen to their concerns, their values, their hopes, their struggles, their trivial things, the most mundane things that you know about them. And people ask me all the time, like, how do you have this network of 250,000 followers on Twitter, let alone the thousands of people on Google Plus and Instagram and Vine and everything else? Because I'm a great listener. So optimize yourself. We all know this wheel of public participation and public engagement. And in the transportation industry, there's these other factors. You can't see them here, but it's economic development, public involvement, data, the fiscal constraints, the safety, non-discrimination, air quality. You know, all those are parameters that we have to have as part of the public engagement process. And I'd like to liken this to the next vision of the public participation prism. And we know the continuum in the middle, right, of public participation. But we can utilize media. We know paid media, right? That's the easiest thing to do. We can pay for an ad, public notices in the newspaper that may or may not get read. How many people have public notices that's just like verbiage after verbiage after verbiage of stuff? And you say to the environmental people or the planning people, Nobody is going to read this but the same 10 people that David Briggs talked about. Or we can use earned media, right? That's press releases and media relations to get third-party validation. But as we're hearing, you heard it from Mayor Becker himself, you know, Salt Lake City is actually a really great city to have, that has KSL, KUTV, Fox News, they've got the Salt Lake Tribune, the Desert News, they've got seven media sources, and he says that they are not covering Salt Lake City and its issues like they should. Can you imagine places in Toledo and Orange County where I'm from, or places in, you know, back east? The media market that you're competing for is even smaller, right? So when Mary Becker says that the media-rich market like Salt Lake City isn't getting the coverage it deserves, can you imagine other places like my home area of Orange County? which LA is this, the media center of the world, they cover LA very well. If it, if it bleeds, it leads. They don't care about all these other things. So that's where social media comes on. And these are all the different tools of social media. You know what they are. You know, visit Mashable, visit other sources, visit my site for more information. And the best thing to do is just dive into them and learn about them. And you can use social media as shared media because that's what people are going to do. People trust their friends, their family. They don't trust government agencies or public agencies as much, but they trust their families and their friends. So utilize these people and their placement of trust. And we'll talk that, a little bit about that a little bit later. So this is my Orange County team of social media practitioners. These are the quick numbers of people. Notice the difference. We have different projects. We're on board. But it's really about the personalization of those projects with the individual that really makes a difference. These are like kind of old numbers. It's been growing about 100%, if you can believe that. I want you to see 800,000 daily social media accounts reach. That's an astronomical number, isn't it? And how can you reach these numbers? It's not that difficult. It takes a little bit of time, it takes a little bit of work, but you too can do this. And it's also about trying to leverage the influencers in your community. It's those people that are very active in the social media sphere that you probably don't even know who they are, right? 
Who knows their social media influentials in your community? Raise your hand. Okay? Maybe seven of you. Right? So there's a lot of opportunities for you to reach out to these people. You don't need to have a huge following yet, but you can leverage your impact of what you're doing with these influentials. So I can share with that with you a little bit later. And everything I'm sharing is also sharing kind of the visual storytelling. And um, if, does anybody know what this is or what I just shared before? What is this called? They're, what? Infographic. Infographic, you got them. So you're seeing a lot of these, right? And why do you think they're, they're useful? Uh, it condenses a lot of complicated information mm -hmm. and a really quick snapshot. Exactly. So you don't really have to think about it. Just look at it real quickly. So that's my advice to you. So use these info, infographics. Condense all that complex data and complex information in a story and tell that story in a visually interesting and arresting way. So a story I want to share with is Bridge Bash. Who's ever heard of Bridge Bash? Probably not because you're not from Southern California. But have you heard of Carmageddon? Okay. This is Orange County's answer to Carmageddon. Okay. Carmageddon happened. I helped them with it a couple years ago. And, um, and we had a full closure of the 405 in Orange County. So we didn't want to be like L.A. because you can't really compete that way. They're going to be some sharp media comparisons, et cetera. So we decided to not make it sound so horrific. We did come up with some names like Caratastrophe. <laughs> <laughs> but we said, no, it's not a positive message. So we came up with Bridge Bash. And so we closed the busiest stretch of the busiest freeway in the United States. And that's the 405. Um, so we shared the story in a very interesting way, right? So the comparison of Bridge Bash and Carmageddon, and we utilize media, social media, very little paid ad. And these are the results. Okay. And what was really interesting was that the media followed the social media, right? So the reporting of what was happening on Twitter, on Vine, and our messaging was that it's not like Carmageddon, it's not the end of the world, we're bashing down a bridge so that we can make the freeway improvements for you. And we also wanted to let people know to stay away from the area, steer clear, which they did, but we also said don't be a looky-loo. I don't know why people look. You know, they look and they cause like traffic disruption. What are they looking at, right? So. We said, we will share with you video and audio, and photos. And we did that. So it was me and another team member. We did it for two consecutive days shooting videos. So I think I shot like 50, 25 Vine videos and about 20 Instagram videos. And the LA Times and Fox and other television stations were carrying those videos as well. So the people didn't have to go there to see what was happening. They can see it from our feed via social media, and it was free, right? So I'm gonna kind of share with you some instant engagement tools that you can utilize immediately. And there's Bird Feud, which is a great way of integrating your social media feed and getting public comments. So they can actually tweet a response. So if you have, do you like this or do you like this? They can actually vote via bird feed. You can use poll everywhere, and everybody's been using poll everywhere, right? But have you seen the results of poll everywhere? No, do you want to? OK. <laughs> so let's see the results of poll everywhere. Log in. Okay, so everybody get your smartphone out. So the first question I have for you is, do you, do you like lunch? So you can simply text the code to 22333. And then if you like lunch, text 
65511515 woo or 65516 no so those are the results and so i am so proud to be part of a conference that's actually using poll everywhere because it's a great way of getting immediate public feedback in a fun way okay so most people like lunch great so I'm going to close that. You ready for the next question? Which social media site do you personally use the most? So text the code to 22333. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Can I get a glass of water? Nice. Okay. I did a limit of 40s to keep it quick. Okay, so most people are using Facebook, no surprise. Thank you. And then Twitter and LinkedIn personally. Great. Great public feedback. I want you to tell me. Which social media is best for public engagement? I have to start it. So text 22333 for Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, LinkedIn. Okay, so consensus, Twitter, Facebook's coming up there in the rear. It's a horse race, yes. The winner is Twitter, Facebook, none. Somebody, six people said none and YouTube. All right, so this shows the power of just kind of like the instant gratification that people have, especially in the millennial generation, the X generation. We want instant gratification, we want it now, okay? Okay, so let's go on. So how do you go about finding what people are saying online? You know, you can do hash tracking or Topsy. So the other, there, so these are different engagement tools that you can utilize. But if you have something more complex, if you want to have a dialogue and discussion, and Chad had a great session about this, having a Twitter townhouse when they had bus fare increases or proposals for bus fare increases, they had Twitter townhouses, right? UTA, way to go, right? So I'm a big fan of UTA, as you know, uh, because I've been tweeting about UTA and sharing Instagram and Vine videos about how easy it is to ride tracks in the front runner. So they decided to host a interactive Twitter town hall. So you can actually do this. You can set up a hashtag, or it's a pound sign with a short word, or it could be abbreviations as well. And so you can have an ongoing conversations with people. And Chad did say, find a hashtag that nobody's using so that you can start that conversation, right? That, for the most part, I think 90% of the time is true. But if people in the rare opportunities that people are already having a conversation about a particular issue, right, a biking issue, et cetera, you might want to kind of utilize that hashtag and kind of pull those people in as well. So there are some rare examples where you want to do that. So what are people saying about a specific topic? And then I want to talk about how you can go about reaching those individuals, OK? So let's go into the Twitter hashtag that we have now is IAP 2 and a 2012. Uh, 2013, no wonder why nobody was saying anything about that. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. For okay, so, so over the past 24 hours, this is called Topsy. And it's a great way of categorizing all tweets. And somebody said that tweets just flew out and they just disappeared. Well, Topsy is the first company to actually categorize every single tweet that's been sent out since it's Twitter's inception seven years ago, six years ago. It's amazing, right? 
So Topsy, I'm a big fan. It's like the most comprehensive database of tweets. And what's amazing is like they're capturing feature tweets as well. Okay, so let's look at our hashtag. What's been the, ha what's been the most tweeted topic? It has nothing to do with the conference, does it? What was it? See what I say, what nobody really cares about you? You would think that the hashtag that you guys would have would be you know, relevant to what's happening in this conversation, but it didn't, right? It was kind of like a little bit of social experiment for my presentation, because I decided to share a video that talked about social engagement in a different way. And it was a video from Thailand that I think, and I tweeted that it was in the spirit of what we're doing here, okay? It's the whole pay it forward mentality that I want you guys to be in the mindset of, right? Be there for your audience and they'll be there for you. So what do I mean by that? So let's go. It's gonna be. I'm gonna start this over, but you guys, um, if I can have the front row people kind of like move over a little bit, because it's gonna be a little bit hard to see, but I want you to see this. Okay. So giving is the best communication, an emotional ad from Thailand in the spirit of IAP 2 NA 2013. <laughs> It's powerful, isn't it? So that was tweeted out 
and it was the most retweeted. And I can show you exposure-wise that this single tweet had been tweeted and retweeted and shared and reshared. And guess what? It had our hashtag in there, right? So all these people that are viewing this video saw the hashtag of IAP2NA2013. And they're going to peek in to see what you folks are doing in citizen civic engagement and participation. Because we're all in it together, right? And so this is a powerful example of how you can leverage what the conversation is already taking place out there. This video has gotten 10 million views. Astronomical, right? So this just happened to be a video that I happened upon at 2 o'clock in the morning, wanted to share it, and you saw it explode, right? You guys saw the Twitter stream and saw all these videos, right? So No Kid Hungry is something that I got contacted by the Food Network. You all know the Food Network. So they contacted me and said, hey, can you help us with this project? They know that I'm really into nonprofit work. So I said, sure. So these are some of the tweets that have happened for the Ted Allen, Mark Murphy, Robert Irvine, Ty Pennington, and whose tweet was number one? I'm not a celebrity, I'm just me, a refugee child that was brought to this country by his mother and father who knew that they needed to leave this country, their homeland, for a brighter future. They took their five-year-old son. And so I'm here sharing with you that you folks need to make that fundamental shift in how your organizations view social media. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about we. So if you have that in your mind, if you can take away from that, then I've done my job here. This is the tweet that was the most retweeted item for a Food Network campaign that did not have the number one tweet from their Food Network stars, but from humble Ted Nguyen. They had 16 million tweets was their goal to reach 16 million people to represent 16 million children in the United States that go hungry every day. They smashed that goal with 25 million accounts reached. And so what happens? All those people that are seeing these tweets, what do they do? They follow me. And if you were involved, they would follow you. Not because you work for who do you work for? AER. AER or this consulting firm or this government agency, because you're a human being who cares about their fellow human beings. I have a lot of takeaways and some, some different tips, but I want to save some time for some Q&A as well. And this is all on my site. I'll have a, um, a special link that you can have all this down. And it's actually customizable with links, so you can actually click on it and you can grow your followers, you can grow your influence. Identify those bloggers or those people that are really active in your communities, and you can network with them and start your presence on social media. And these are some of the stats that I have as well, these demographic numbers. Okay, so questions? Okay. Okay, go ahead. What software are you using for your infographics? I am following the lead of um, a lot of different organizations that I do it myself. <laughs> Yeah, I do graphic design as well as, um, as um, you know, because there are different softwares, and it's on my site as well, that you can actually plop in data and get some beautiful graphics as well. So that's all on the site that I'll give to you as well, okay? Other questions? Oh, go ahead. It surprised me to see the response um, none one of the questions on the poll. It really surprised me. What is your opinion as to why people would respond? I think people respond by saying none because they don't feel that it's really relevant because they haven't personally used it yet. Or perhaps they're not doing it now is the other reason. 
Do you have a response to that? I answer none because I don't think any of those are particularly good at actual public engagement. Okay. I think there's some excellent things that we've heard here, but those aren't any of them. <laughs> okay. That's so that's why she answered none. But my response to that is I think you have to use it as a mix of the different tools that you have and use it. And I love what, uh, what you said about using it as a confirmation. So in your formal process, you can kind of confirm what people are saying by social media. There may be some other ideas that social media will bring to the table as well, so you should utilize that. I think there'll be a, come a time when input, public input via Twitter or Facebook or whatever social media channel comes up ahead will be considered at the same level as a formal comment. comment. Question back there? Yeah, uh, thanks for the talk, Ted. I just want to comment for the record. I put none in, and I meant to hit YouTube for my number. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so besides you, there's somebody else. Okay, well, I think we have one more time for one more question before I close it. Well, I just wondered if you had any good examples of government agencies doing social media, like off the top of your head, who I could... Yeah, I think the federal government has a lot of examples of some uh, directives that they're doing. But then I saw, I know that Eileen has a white paper that she's going to be um, sharing. And it's, um, what's the website, Eileen, that people? Eventually, it'll be uh, NEPA and social media.com. It's not quite live and ready yet, but by the end of the month, um, that link will um, go to the summary research I've done and some suggested practices for implementing social media for projects. Okay. So I wanted to end by telling my story. You know, I kind of mentioned it before. Social media is about storytelling. It's about sharing information in a compelling way, but sharing in a way that makes you human. So my story is five years old, left Vietnam because my father was a naval officer. And my mother, who's pictured here, holding my baby brother, Vincent, who works for UTA, as well, I work for a transportation organization in Orange County. Um, so my mother knew that my father would be killed because he was a high-ranking military official. And so she pled with him to leave Vietnam, 1975, at the Saigon Harbor. There were people that are piling on to these naval ships, and we had a free ride, we had space. But he refused to go, he refused to leave everything that he had to go to an unknown. My mother, the foresight that she had knew that he, along with the rest of the family, had to leave. There's me holding the teddy bear, hence my name, Ted. I came here because I actually had scheduled a vacation with my, um, from my mother who had um, uh, a scheduled surgery. And Eileen happened to call me and said, hey, we're having a conference, would you like to come? said, I'd love to have family in town. And she doesn't know this, but my mother is you know, having the procedure. So I just happened to be in town. And I am so grateful for mothers, and you all are mothers and fathers out there that care. And because of her, we're here. So the story goes that she was carrying me, my brothers, and pled with my father, said, please leave. If you do not leave, the communists will come and kill you. He refused to leave. She grabbed me and said, if you don't leave, I'm going to t jump into the Saigon Harbor with your firstborn son. I looked up to my mother and said, I'm the firstborn son, <laughs> and I don't know how to swim. And so I yelled and cried. And because of that scream, because of that voice, because of Nada's voice, I'm here in front of you today to share with you all these amazing tools that you can utilize to make the world a better place. So I know it's hard being out in the front line, but I know that you can do it. You are making a difference, and I'm so proud to be among the company of so many amazing people that are changing the lives of people in your communities. Continue doing that, and when it becomes difficult, when it becomes almost unbearable, Think about what drives you, and think about those children out there that you're making a better world for. So thank you so much for listening today.
That was the best TED talk I've ever heard. 